if I chose to. In point of fact, it's actually rather a lot of work and my editions tend to be around 25. These are original prints. They're, they're not sent off to your local lithographer. Um, they're hand-pulled artist's prints and they are originals, each one of them. No other original exists. Pat, let's talk briefly about some of the images that you've done. Could you start us out with Welcome Matt? Well, Welcome Matt is a little bit about the failure of the society to welcome some children, which is why they're on the street. And th this image shows a young teenage girl with a baby, and either the baby is her little brother or the baby is her own. That we don't know. She has a sign that says, we'll work for food. But she's obviously not old enough to work and obviously in need. And I think the image is just one that is probably repeated in every big city in the entire country. These children need to be taken care of. A crime scene is the image that June Fitzpatrick used for the invitations for this show. And it probably represents the spirit of the show as much as any of them do. It shows a man wrapped in a dollar bill with a flag in his hand. But there are hungry and sick and disabled and homeless people all around his feet. He, he cannot see them. He is blindfolded. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we want to ignore these social problems. They're not easy to solve. It's easier to go about our business and do our jobs without paying attention. But somebody needs to pay attention. Home Sweet Home is, is probably the print out of the whole series. This one, this one is the one closest to my heart. It shows a mother and four children in the back seat of a car. And three of the children are asleep. They're very small. They're sleeping peacefully. The fourth child looks to be 10 or 11 years old. And she's just old enough to know that this is not the way families should live. Pat, have your, have your works of art always been cause-related as these homeless ones are? No, there's a tendency among printmakers to do a lot of social commentary. The, the medium lends itself to social commentary. But I used to do prints that were full of colors. I lived in Mexico for a very long time. You have flowers blooming in December and January there. The people are warm, there's a lot of music, there's a lot of dancing, there's a lot of enjoyment. And I, th I think that series of prints that I did in the early to mid 90s is a very happy bunch of prints. They're reduction prints, they're up to 10 colors. It's a question of printing the lightest color and cutting away the block and overprinting the next color and so forth. Is that why it's called reduction? Because you're cutting away. Um, is that what it means by reduction work? Yes. The print is gradually reduced. You print smaller and smaller amounts of the color and at the end of the process, when the edition is finished, the block is pretty much destroyed. You, you can't print more from it. But it's an excellent technique. It's very enjoyable. Tell me what your Mexican friends think of your Mexican images. Oh, they get it entirely. It, the, the best reaction I remember is a Mexican friend of mine saw my print of people dancing. And he looked at me and said, you really like Mexicans, don't you? And that was one of, one of the nicest parts of showing the work there, that it was very much appreciated. But when I had finished exploring all of that, and doing my landscapes, and doing my people in the market, 
I then came to the point where I had something more to say, and this group of prints is the culmination of that. Does this come out of your, your heart and your soul and your mind as you go along? I usually start with a feeling. I, I will read about somebody who is having an experience um, and I will have some empathy for that person. And as the feeling stays there, um, I begin to feel the image, not more than see it. Um, and I will start drawing. And it evolves over a period of a month or so until I finally have a work that looks like it has some integrity and it's finished. Um, and then it's ready to go. Are you surprised at the end that you look, mm -hmm. because you work sometimes on a table, you put a huge piece down on a table. And when you finally step back, are you amazed that, you, that this came out of you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, very often I am, um, because it takes little twists and turns that I don't anticipate, and I just keep working on it, and all of a sudden, there it is. And I don't know where it comes from. Well, you talked about your hands sort of guiding you, that your hands actually... Yeah, a lot of it is just the feel, um, the curve of a cheek or, or a mound of snow or the rigidity of the building, the feeling is in my hands a lot of the time and um, it w they remember how to do these things. This is hard information. This, this, is, this is not tough. the way I expected to see this society. When I was a child looking forward to growing up, I did not expect to see beggars in the streets. That was something that happened in third world countries. Mm, that's right. That's how I was raised too. But this one, you, my, the one that I like, that I, that I, the best that I call your Guernica, mm. is got so many images in it. In particular, a lot of scenes of people hopelessly trapped in barb, barbed wire. Mm -hmm. And is that because of why? It, do you feel that the homeless feel that have that sense? Well, it, you know. Among the people that are homeless, there's a, there are a number of reasons for being homeless. You may be mentally ill. You may be a victim of abuse. You may be not too well developed mentally, intellectually. You may be uneducated. There's as many reasons for homelessness as there are homeless people. One thing that sticks out is all of them are trapped in a situation where they don't fit into the larger society comfortably. They're not able to negotiate the regular nine to five job, the four bedroom colonial in the suburbs and the new SUV. And they don't fit into that for one reason or another. Most people are not homeless because they want to be homeless. Most people are homeless because they can't find a way to do it differently. Pat, I would say that these were three years well spent. It's wonderful work. What are you doing in the future? What's coming up next for you? Well, I do have one little project I've been working on. Maybe you'd like to see it. Pat, look at this. Pat, is that why you were taking all these <laughs> pictures of me all this time? That's me, folks. Pat, I love this. This is. Amazing. Dark Thank you so much. I absolutely love it. Oh my, you gotta have a little look at this again. Anyway, everybody, thank you very much for coming on this adventure with us with Elsie and Company. And Pat, I think I'm just startled with this. I think it's getting to be showtime. Let's go and let the folks in to see your remarkable works. Thank you, everybody. Bye.